light for you in dark places when all other lights go out. Hey guys, DCHL Devin here. I'm DCHL Jake. And today we were actually working on our Return of Kerner campaign, which has a whole bunch of new models. And uh, we had to make a bunch of profiles for them. But then as we were just talking about it, we're like, well, we might as well just share them here with you. Yeah, we might as well. I mean, we're, you know, we're going over uh, Dane, uh, um, hopefully on his pig, uh, the Torula Whirlies, which are my personal favorite because yes. elven shooting, I freaking hate those. And then um, I think everyone uh, wants to see those, uh, the chariots. Of the, course. With the Gatling guns on them, because I mean, who doesn't want dwarves behind Gatling guns? Hey, honestly, dwarves on Gatling guns in chariots is exactly <laughs> what this game needs. So, <laughs> so, I mean, but basically we were like, you know what, why don't we just take this a step further? One time you guys in a few uh, older video you recognize uh, we had, me and Walker made a profile for Talion and, uh, from the Shadow of Mordor game. And we're like, oh, well. that's who you're talking about. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> exactly. Know. Actually, and that's where we're like, well, wait a minute. Why don't we just, you know, we got J. Claire rewriting the rules. That's true. And we got, you know, all this is happening. So it's like, well, why don't we just give our take on what we'd like to see the profiles look like? Guys, we're going to run a whole series on this. This will actually give us the content that we need and all that and keep posting videos about War of the Ring profiles, Legions of Middle Earth profiles. In fact, there's actually a guy who was making legions and middle, uh, middle earth profiles for the Canadian group. And I mean, honestly, this is this is kind of a thing that a lot of people do. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they just, really wanted them. Yeah, just share profiles with everybody. Mm. I mean, why not? Exactly. And I, so today we're just going to stick with maybe the first five we'll just go with because there's honestly a lot to work with here. Yeah. We're going to run the Iron Hills Dwarves. So, Jay Claire, if you're listening to this, this is an idea that we have for what the Iron Hills Dwarves would look like, and you should do them because they're awesome. <laughs> Grab a pen. Now, honestly, admittedly, some of them are more thought out than others right now, but mm. like I said, we're just kind of developing these. But we do already have two made, all right? And so we're gonna run into the Iron Hills Dwarves headlong. Of course, let's start with Dane. Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's I'm go ahead and start with him. So we got, uh, what is it, uh, DCHL Rob, who was our judge last year at Nova and uh, this year a player of it, uh, one of our best players for the DCHL. And actually, if you ask the GBHL, they, they know like he's very difficult to beat. Um, so he actually came up with uh, some Iron Hills profiles for us. So that takes a lot of work <laughs> out of... <laughs> We're, <laughs> that makes this video like 10 minutes shorter. <laughs> so, yeah, at least 10 minutes shorter. <laughs> so well, I'm going to go ahead and wrote what he did. Now, Rob is kind of more of a fan of the simpler profiles, the simpler approach to the game, subtle details that make a better profile. Honestly, this is why I like the game. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 more, the more special rules a character has, the more complicated he becomes to use, and it just bogs everything down. Yes. And uh, I think, yeah, so this is his profile, all right, guys? He, he has 130-point Dane Ironfoot. He moves five inches, uh, fight six. You guys can see it on the screen here. Strength four, defense eight, proper four, a Dwarven King. Now, you may notice it's one less than the Dwarf King of uh, the cur we currently have, but um, I believe that's just because of the representation on screen yeah. um, on, the, on the film. Mm -hmm. And so we have three attacks, three wounds, courage seven, three might, three will, three fate. Uh, this is all proper fitting for what you'd expect from a dwarf lord. Um, dwarf heavy armor, two-handed hammer. Uh, you can get Fergus on a pig for 15 points. <laughs> he has Burly, Fearless. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Burly makes that two-handed hammer work for him. Fearless means he, you know, of course, fearless. Yep. Uh, lord of the Iron Hills. <laughs> He has uh, a stand fast of 12 inches rather than six. Now, the dreaded headbutt ability. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is what he came up with for headbutt. I'm and, excited to see this. Yeah, I know. I'm actually reading this right now for the first time. Uh, not for the first time, but I, I haven't remembered it. We came up with these a long time yeah. ago. So, uh, headbutt. If Dane wins a fight while on foot, he may choose to perform a headbutt rather than striking normally. Choose one opponent involved in the fight. The victim suffers a strength four hit, and should he survive, 
He is reduced to fight value and attacks value of one and a shoot value of six plus until the end of the following turn. Furthermore, roll a d6 on a four plus, the target of the head putt is knocked prone. Huh. So this is actually a combination of stun. Do you know what stun is? Mm, so that's the thing the, the the sheriffs like the little the little hot yes. sheriffs do right it's not even just sheriffs though guys it's actually staffs in general stun makes it so that on a four up you roll a die and on a four up instead of striking you reduce fight and attacks down to one so he took the stun mechanic which makes sense because he's like headbutting him but then added a strength four hit and potentially knocked them prone I mean it makes sense I mean you saw him in the movie he was I think he headbutted more things than he hit with his hammer. Yeah, I know. He seemed to like that better, actually. Yeah. So what we do know, <laughs> what we do notice though, here's the thing about it. So it does a strength four hit. That's cool. Mm -hmm. um, fight values tax reduced to one. That's cool. Knocked prone. Notice there's no modifier for what size the model is. So no joke. Oh God, no. <laughs> He sees where I'm going to No, no. <laughs> so, without any modifier, if you don't say a man-sized model, then that means you can knock Fell Beast right off. Wait, 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 wait. It does, does, does being knocked prone count as moving the model? It, it doesn't count as, well, I mean, so he's knocked he, prone. It's in the fight phase, though, so, I, I mean, the fight is practically over. I know, but can he headbutt a mummock? No, well, the mama can't be knocked prone. Oh, okay, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, it literally has a movable object. You can't knock that's it prone. That's what, okay, I was curious. Yeah, um, so yeah, it would ignore that. Oh, that's... that's but funny. overall, <laughs> um, yeah, fight, so everything's good, but right up to that point, the knock prone part, I can see some really abusive <laughs> stuff. I don't know if that's an oversight or if that was... Like, he was literally like, yeah, yeah, take the Telk to Fell Beast down. <laughs> he, can, he can hit but dragons. Yes. <laughs> he could be like, ah, oh, Smaug. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, well, Smaug's also a movie. Yeah, no, but, no, like, uh, but really, a, a dwarf just... <laughs> it's a nice dragon you got there. Sure would be bad if something happened. <laughs> <laughs> so... We'd probably modify this to say a man-sized model. Bit. What man? Let him do it to a troll, maybe. Well, actually, you know what? The hammers, um, you could combine the stun with the hammers. So instead, you do a strength test. Mm -hmm. Dane already would get the plus one for the strength test because he, um, he has a two-handed weapon. Yeah. And it's not saying you're not using that. So even though we know he's using his head, yeah. whatever. So, his head's as hard as a hammer. Yeah. Well, it's proven. So um, basically... We would have a strength test and then knock him prone. I can see that. So, monsters. So, maybe I might add that on there or at least add a modifier for a, a man sized yeah. model. Otherwise, it is a bit. Uh, the the ability is good. It, it's, it's good, right? It's, right in that, and that's getting abusive right there. <laughs> I like I said, don't know if that was intentional. But otherwise, I like it. Yeah, I like everything about it. In fact, I like the idea of knocking dragons on their butt. Because a dwarf headbutted them. So, you heard it from Jake. He wants he wants to knock dragons <laughs> on their butt <laughs> so, with a headbutt. Dragon just sits there confused. It just happened. <laughs> this is why the dwarves go to war with dragons. Because they're like they take a look at their hammers and they're like whatever. <laughs> so. We're gonna move on though, right. uh, so that's that's what I would probably change about that. But otherwise, yeah. I do like the ability. Um, as far as using it, I'm not 100% sure how often I'd want to, mostly because, well one, he's strength four. So we're keeping Dwalin as the strength five profile, of course. Yeah. Um, but then we got uh, Burly plus one to wound, so it won't matter, but. Him and Dwalin in a fight. The thing is. him to knock over and then Dwalin to. You could do that. To end him. I'm trying to figure out a situation where I'd want to use the headbutt instead of just you, striking with three strength four attacks if I mean, you've got more more models in the fight if it's just him him and one other person you wouldn't but if it's him with lots you know, of other stuff five yeah other that keeps him hills, kind of he'll knock them over they'll double up on their things with you know i'm assuming iron hills are going to have two-handed two-handed hammers so yep he knocks them over they all double up and then everything becomes bad news bears for them
All right, then, uh, yeah, so I guess there is definitely a use for that. And the knock prone, of course, the kicker, which is why I would use it as well. I mean, he's on foot, remember? Mm -hmm. So he's he can't, he can no longer, you know, deal with the threats of, be well, he's not, you know, not mounted. But speaking of his mount, yep. actually, Fergus the War Pig, that's his real name, by the way. Really? Fergus. Yep. Um, the book? Yeah, uh, if you guys don't know, DCHL Rob is our uh, Lord of the Rings expert, known as <laughs> Lord Elrond. <laughs> so he's the he's the guy who's like, you know, all into the lore and everything. And he actually knew the name of this pig. I didn't even know he had a pig. Wasn't that a movie edition? I'm I'm assuming so. I didn't I don't remember anything about a, a Burgess the pig. Maybe maybe in the movie they like added it in the credits and I missed it. They just I, named the pig. Maybe. Maybe Bill Connolly was like This needs a name. Would you name my pig? No. <laughs> Uh, so basically, the pig uh, has uh, movement six, which is really slow. Wait, wait. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? He's what? calf move six. No, that's good. That that's smart though. The thing is, it's a pig. We saw it. It's like this freaking it's snouty just, little thing. Yeah, but have you ever tried to catch a pig? Okay, so I. Well, I, he I, is I, holding my, a full armored door. That's well, yeah, but it's. I mean, they're armored pigs. Okay, my redneck is coming out here. You've, I've chased a pig before. Those little bastards are quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a full-on boar, though. Exactly, it's an armored boar. This thing was bred for war. You don't think it's gonna move, you know, a little bit faster than, I don't know, four long the fat? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't think Rob spent his time chasing <laughs> pigs. In his spare time, so you maybe he just doesn't know. <laughs> it's a good Saturday night. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> so I think, all right, fine. I can, have them, I can see them at move eight, maybe. So they're slower than calf. They're slower than you were Yeah, calf. We'll, we'll keep them at eight, I guess. I, I think a lot, I, I, honestly, as a guy who doesn't chase pigs on his spare time <laughs> in the weekends, <laughs> so I was so like, yeah, six makes <laughs> sense. I was arguing for four. <laughs> So, I, I mean, but yeah, I mean, not escaping anybody. So probably change it to three, maybe eight inches. To hey, represent at least it. seven or eight. Make him faster than make it to where the he's faster than a a, a dwarf. Yeah, but so. Jim, don't don't make it to where the dwarf calf are as fast as a human. Okay, it's still a calf model. It got to be a move a little bit faster. Uh, you're paying really for the um, the knockdown, but what you're yeah. also paying for is look at this fight three, mm -hmm. strength four, defense five. That, base before yeah, the base that no armor but base can you give him armor well no i assume the profile assumes he has armor uh which is what rob did with that but here's the resilience of the pig zero attacks zero attacks he can't he shouldn't have zero attacks actually even horses have one attack and i think this is for sorcerer's blast no because they can exchange the attacks with the rider yeah i don't know why horses have one attack <laughs> oh, you know what? He doesn't want it to, um, if you have an attack value, then I believe you're like a warg. You can stay in play. Yeah. No, so I, I think he was thinking what, ahead. What horses can't? Horses, I think, have a rule that they can't, they literally, it's like kind of feral. I, I have to look it up. There's something, I remember it was something. I think it's if you have an attacks value, you can stay in play. But horses have a rule that says you can't. So it makes it an exception to the rule. Mm -hmm. If Rob had given Fergus attacks, then he would have also had to have that exception. Otherwise, he could stay in play just like a warg does. Okay. So that was actually smart. And uh, two wounds, um, which is two wounds. Yeah. So that's a big deal. It actually takes a concerted effort to bring this pig down and four courage. Four so. courage isn't bad. Well, I mean, he'd use Dane's courage. Anyway. Yeah, I still the. Well, you wouldn't need Dane's courage. Dane's fearless. Hmm. Um, but... Defense 5, I think you should give it, have it the ability to get armor, because, I mean, having to... Why would you ride in a war with no armor? Yeah, I, I mean, well, honestly, the same thing as a horse. here's the deal, you're going to take the armor. It, yeah. Eastland Cataphracts have armored horses, they don't they, have an option. Standard, Morgul yeah. Morgul Knights, armored horses, no option. The only ones who ever had an option is, like, the ring rays. They can take a horse or an armored horse. Yeah. But I think, you know what, you're going to armor up the pig. It's 15 points. Just give him the armor. Yeah, and make him D6, right? Yeah. Uh, no, make him D5. 
Well, see, that's that's what I'm saying. So you, all you, mounts are defunct. Think about it. Warrior of Minas Tirith with armor. Yeah. Five defense. You got to give him a shield to get to that defense six. Well, we haven't seen these these dwarf. We're already making him move slower, and I I just think you should make. I mean, and they're two dwarves. wounds. He has two wounds. I mean, that's 15 points for a two wound defense five model. That's good. That's a fair bargain. I'd, yeah. I'd take that price. Right. The only thing I could say, honestly, is eight inch movement. But otherwise, yeah. I wouldn't make him defense six. I really wouldn't. Okay. I personally, I mean, I just going through it. Mm -hmm. I, that's how I'm thinking. So, um, All right. but yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts. Uh, you're, we're talking about, you know, a completely made up model. So now if this is the model we go with, then it will be in our Return of Kerner campaign at Nova. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, actually even before Nova, if you're in the United States area, we'll be playing this actually well before. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, this is the yeah. Dane. Now, okay, you're probably going to think, wait, when is Return of Kerner? It's actually fourth age. Mm -hmm. Dane's dead. Uh, this will be his son. Yeah, so Dane. So Dane the Dean. something. Yeah, Dean. Dean Ironfoot. Yeah. So, <laughs> so next we have, um, we're going to actually skip a Captain of the Battle uh, of the Iron Hills. I'm just going to, Captain of the Iron Hills is going to be better than your Warriors of the Iron Hills. So really the more important one is the Warriors of the Iron Hills. Yeah. Now, Warriors of the Iron Hills. Here's the problem. If you can tell that the Warriors of Erebor were what the Iron Hills were supposed to be. You mean the Think about it. If Yes, the profile. If I had to make a Iron Hills warrior, the exact profile I would give it is the Warriors of Erebor. Mm -hmm. But now they exist. The Warriors of Erebor exist. So you can give the Iron Hills the exact same stats and be really boring, make them spears. Uh, I know a lot of people think they should have pikes, but actually you can tell by the way they form up, it should be spears. It, yeah, it they fight two ranks. If you, yeah, if you pause it, there's, there's, it's weird. There's the shields, and then there's two dwarves right next to yeah. those. Yeah, they're not, they're not too deep. They're right next to them, so they're side by side. So, uh, it's still just a regular spear supporting one dwarf. The the way I would put. So now we're talking about making the Iron Hills a little different. Mm -hmm. Now this is where my brother came in. He actually made a rule where the Iron Hills Dwarfs can support shielding models. That's it. Otherwise, it's a Warrior of Airborne stats, but can support shielding models. So you get the three attacks, and if you win, you can still strike You can still strike, but you get one die. Okay, that's, I, I can see that. It's like a Spartan strategy, yeah. right? Yeah. It's kind of like the push, stab, mm -hmm. you know, I, I like it. I think it's actually a great idea. Can you, can you? Bash models with a shield? No, you cannot bash models with a shield. Why not? It's a good question. I don't know why you cannot. Because I mean, <laughs> I, I'm I'm looking at because no, I mean honestly, it's just simply because that you don't want to give too many special rules to different things. Remember, a shield can already use shielding. Yeah. So hence, you wouldn't want to continuously do that. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I'm just dealing with with this block. You would have the you know the Spartan-esque style fighting, so they would bash, and then the spears would double up on the. You're the talking about knocking down the model. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't that? That's actually interesting. Um, so that's another idea. Uh, maybe Iron Hills Dwarves can bash with their shield. With their shields, so they can. Would we want to give them both so they can support shielding models? And... No, you wouldn't want to give both. You got to pick one or the other. Okay. Yeah, because then too many special rules complicates it. Notice Dane, the leader of the Iron Hills, has one. Yeah. I don't know. I guess what I mean. I guess so, which one would you pick? I, I'm more offensive. I would, uh, and I love the Spartan esque style fighting. So, I, mm. th I think me personally, dwarves. I don't think I would ever really shield with dwarves unless I was going against a troll because they're already mm. what D seven or would they? They'd be D seven, right? Uh, yeah, or they're D seven. Yeah, yeah, D7. yeah. So, I, mm. I think personally, I would pick the the bashing, um, and then the stabbing them while they're on the ground. That's that's what I personally would pick. Okay. Um, honestly, I I'm still in favor of the shielding one, but actually, I'd love to hear your guys' options. What would you rather have? A shielding dwarf, or that so dwarf Iron Hills mm -hmm. that can support shielding models, so you get three die, but you only strike one, or you can bash with your shields. Mm -hmm. 
That's a good, uh, but they're both simple rules. Honestly, yeah. I think it would one's be honestly. One's offensive, one's just defensive. Honestly. Yeah, exactly. So, and then of course the airboard captain would be better. Yeah, of course. With he the would. same rule. <laughs> so, <laughs> two, one, one, and a fight of plus one. Now, just to put in perspective, Rob actually made a profile for this as well. Uh, Rob actually has them where they can take a shield for a point. Uh, so they're Warrior of Airborne stats, eight points. Um, they can take an Iron Hills polearm. Now I've noticed Rob gave them pikes. He gave he gave them pikes instead. Yeah. I, the only thing is, I think from his memory, he thinks they had pikes, which a lot of people do think, mm -hmm. but they're they're clearly spears. They're we, like very we, short. Like yeah. we slowed it down and we watched frame by frame. Yeah. Like the camera moves. You can you can clearly see that it's only too deep. And um, then we have, they have phalanx, which is basically the same rule the East Wings have, which is smart if you have pike. But pikes can since they're not pikes, I think if he knew they weren't pikes. Yeah, he would do something else. So let's go ahead and move on, guys, to the Iron Hills Cav, which are the Ram Riders. Now, yes! this is a big one. It's a big one. Uh, honestly, we're really looking forward to seeing what J. Claire does with these. Mm -hmm. um, this is really what... What uh, he came up with. So, Ram Riders aren't a specific unit. Oh, no, they are. He has them priced as an 18 point unit. Ooh. Move five, fight four, strength three, defense six, uh, one attack, one wound, and four courage. You can see it up here on the screen. Where's the, is the defense? The defense this is a dwarf, not the pig, right? Uh, well, you always take defense. Well, no, the, so we don't know what the, uh, the Ram itself stat is i haven't okay. read that off but we have what an iron hills pole arm <clears throat> so iron hills pole arm is really special uh we'll get into that um and then you have and then these guys come with a battle ram so it's 18 points flat mm -hmm. now let's explain what the battle ram does the battle ram is a cavalry mount with the fallen profile eight inch move so you get your eight inches i like that ram should be slower uh, three fight three strength Five defense, zero attacks once again. So this is deliberate. Yeah. Yeah, so this is clearly is deliberate. Around. Yep. Uh, one wound, three courage. And then he's got an ability, powerful charge. When a model riding a dwarven battle ram charges into combat, the ram inflicts a strength four hit on one enemy model in base contact as soon as the charge is completed. If the model charged is a cav model, both the rider and the mount take a strength four hit. Not to mention also he has sure-footed. A model mounted on a Dwarven Battle Ram may make climb tests as if they were an infantry model. Okay. This is exactly <clears throat> how I would have made it. Exactly. I, like, I guess I'm gonna play devil's advocate because I, I, I actually agree with that. Oh, and they have, lan they have lances. Sorry, Iron Hill's pole arm is a, is is a, it's a lance. Yeah, go ahead. So with me, I'm looking at a Ram and I'm looking, uh, the strength for hit, I like, um, mm. but I think that's the same thing the camels have, right? It is exactly. But what it, the camels have it because they have big giant spikes on the front of them. Yes. Rams don't. They have these big blunt horns. Mm. So, again, I'm just flirting with the idea. Could they? Great um, piece of Borgoroth. Um, that well on on their charge. Through? Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm. Semi. So they would they would charge. They hit, and then they get. Um, uh, oh, my mind's going mm. blank. Barge. Yep. They get uh, a free barge. And that was another option. Actually, let me go with that. Uh, the, uh, yeah, barge was a thought. Give them the barge brutal power attack. Or if make they, it so that they can run through models. Like, they cause a strength four hit, and if mm -hmm. the model is killed, they keep going. The Great Beast of Gorgoroth has that. That would be kind of cool, actually. Yeah. Uh, there were some people who felt like they should have that as well. Yeah. Um, I, this is without playtesting. Mm-hmm. But I probably, of all the three options, I wouldn't go the barge route. Mm -hmm. The reason why is because barge allows you to move the model in any direction of your choice, which is kind of not realistic for how it works. <clears throat> um, and it makes it move D6 inches. It, it, it doesn't seem to function mechanically the way I would want it to work, as it opposed to the charge through the enemy model. Strength four hit makes it not broken. Mm -hmm. Now you have an army of these things doing it, but I mean, 18 point cav shouldn't be abused too much. Yeah. So you you run through them with the um, the, the strength four hit. Mm -hmm. I think that's the route I would go with it. He did the camel approach, mm -hmm. which, is, which is probably the most balanced way of doing it. 
Yeah. Probably. I, I really don't know. Like I said, if you want to go for the way to do it that is the most safe option, mm-hmm. I would say the way he did it is done. But the way the most fun and most realistic to the way I would think this should be done yeah, should be more like the Great Beast. What do you think? So if uh, with with the other one, if you charge a calf model, both the guy and the horse take the strength four, right? Yes. No, I, I like that because I, I was the way I was looking at the barge is they would hit they hit a calf line and mm. they would knock the calf over. That way you wouldn't have. To oh, in this case, strength four on both rider and mount. But one of them's going. One down. of them's going to die. So Dude. yeah, I actually I, I like the, the great beast of Gorgoth route. Well, this is not the great beast. This is the camel route. Well, no, but the the other one, they take a straight four hit, and if you, if they die, they keep going, right? Oh, oh, okay, yes, yeah, yeah. Then that does it on both horse and rider. It does as well. kill both, mm-hmm. and if it kills them both, it with I guess the cab model, it has to kill them both. But if it yes. kills them both, yeah, just keep going. I I like that route. Okay. And at eighteen points a model, I think the only other you've got Morgul knights that are more expensive. More well, there's a lot more expensive. Uh, Morgul knights, Sons of Errol, Gladium Cav, Rivendell knights. Gladiator and Cav start at 18, and then they just go up from there. I thought they were 16. No, no, that's the Mirkwood Cav. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, there, <laughs> there's a lot <clears throat> on there. Um, but, yeah, no, these are pretty cheap Cav. Mm-hmm. If we were to make them run through models, we'd probably get a points bump. Maybe yeah, to, probably. Maybe to 20. Gonna, yeah. Probably about that. Yeah. Um, just because they can now hit harder more. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, other than that, now keep in mind, what keeps this really balanced is the fact that they only move eight inches. They're not going far. Yeah. And also, you could even make it where they move in a straight line. And and then, yeah. Um, now, <clears throat> the honest other thing that I'm really glad he added in here, sure-footed. They can make climb tests. Yeah. That is so cool. I don't even know why, because it's such a bad idea to climb on top of a building and do what? Jump jump off. You could jump off. They jump off and they headbutt the mummock on the way by. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly... I'm I'm thinking. Uh, hmm. Oh wait, this is a really stupid question, and, and hmm. it probably shouldn't. Could it jump on top of the howda if it, the building was tall enough? Oh, uh, yes. And then could it fight? The no, on top? no, no, no. Because you can't, you can't actually have the base on the um, the Mummic platform. Only fits infantry. The, the very top can sit. Yeah, just infantry model. Just infantry model. Yep. Twenty-five mil base. That's all that'll fit in that. So the game doesn't have the whole, no, it, as long as the base doesn't fall over, it's fine. Because I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it has that. It does say that. <laughs> so He can literally char- sit on top of the uh, it, little. It'll charge in, because it's part of the move, it just charges. Like, so it jumps off the building, makes the climb test, or the jump test. So it charges, hits that one dude, does the strength four hit against it, takes his place. <laughs> and now this ram, this ram rider is just- You're gonna jump off a building. <laughs> It's just running around on top of this how to charging people. There you go. The answer to Mummix. Ram Rider Cat. Jump on top of the Mummix and balance it in such a way that it's sitting there rushing everything. It's like, it's like having a deer. I mean, in that it. way, honestly, you could invade a Mummix in this way. You could just jump off a building. Because your leap distance off a building is actually double your height. Yeah, so a lot of people don't know that. That's a good what the, the ram rider would be what so two. Four, They're like four yeah, inches? they'd be like two inches high. So if you have a four inch jump, no mummick would be safe. No, <laughs> <laughs> mummicks would be. <laughs> where are the rams? <laughs> you just <laughs> as soon as you go over a build an underpass, charge like three four rams. <laughs> Jumping into the bubble. You just add the Super there you Mario go. jump thing. Boing. <laughs> this is this is the answer. Could you? This uh, is why you have sure footed. Could you? Could you <laughs> take over? Well, once you kill everyone on top, does the monk run away, or can you control? You you can kill. But let, let's not jump onto that subject too far. <laughs> it's a bizarre scenario that'll probably never really happen. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I don't care. I'm gonna but I do like that profile. So let us know what you guys think in the comment section because, of course, we have to use those as well. Yeah. Now, on to the stuff that um, Rob didn't really do. So, so where do you he, want to start? He made a Iron Hills Ballista, but at the time he made these rules, 
he didn't know that they fired the twirly whirlies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the twirly whirly would have to be added into this. And if you guys don't know what the twirly whirlies are, then that means you need to watch the Battle of Five Armies extended edition. And if you haven't done that yet, there's no excuse. Honestly, the extended edition is better by in, miles. In every way, shape. In every, it's, it easily turns into one of the best Hobbit films. So Just don't bring your kids to it. Don't, yep, <coughs> not at all. <laughs> Um, so we're talking about uh, twirly whirlies basically break arrows. Um, Rob had said, he said something for this. He said he mentioned the fact that a six inch area effect of the target mm -hmm. needs a six to hit. Yeah, I mean, okay, so for those of you who haven't seen it, what happens is arrows fire. Boo! There's catapults or ballista on this side that fire a mm. big solid metal rod with a chain on it. And as it's firing, the chain whips around, so it creates this, this blender effect. And once it hits arrows, it blows them up in the air, and then it comes out and hits a line and kills everything. So that's, that's why it negates arrows, essentially. Um, just to give you a little insight on what the toilet warriors do. Yeah. So he that, said with everything within six inches, it's like a shadow. Uh, yeah, it's like a shadow lord. You need six to hit. Um... I, I mean, I didn't see a single arrow get through that thing, but and, so wait, wait. So maybe you wouldn't be able to fire at all. <clears throat> it, it's like a heroic shoot. Basically, he interpreted it like a heroic shoot. Mm -hmm. It's like you see the enemy firing, you're like, nope, fire, and then the, the, the twirly whirlies come out, you know, and everything within the six inch radius won't be able to of the target of the target okay. that you hit, it won't be able to fire. Mm -hmm. um, I'm okay with the rule. I think I would just decrease six to. You can't fire at all. But would that completely but, negate certain armies? If you brought this in the back and, if, and say, for instance, you brought an army of rangers. No joke, yeah. Rangers and a lot <laughs> of them, yeah, they would, their shooting game would be up. You'd have to spread them out like crazy. Should it be like some sort of test? Like uh, No, because no, you complicate things too much. Um, I, it's either a six to hit or can't hit. That's that's really what. It, I mean, ultimately, Lord of the Rings survives on its simplicity. Yeah. Uh, the less tests you have to make, the better. You don't want it to be in the way. That weapon was designed to tear up your arrows. Think about it. An entire elven army fired its shots, and then not Nothing. one, not one, made it through. There, there's no in the way for that. That your your arrow's gone. Should we should so. we do it? Make it to where you only you can do it only twice a game. No, honestly, I think, well, first off, think about this. One, you need priority to do it. Yeah. Okay? Or you need to call a heroic shoot. Number two, you need to be all within six inches of your, so if you're having problems with this, then just spread out. There's no volley in the game anymore. So you have no reason to keep your archers together. I, I'm honestly fine with the way it works. <clears throat> I don't think the it's only, broken. The only reason I'm not, the only reason I'm not fine with it is because if you compare the two, so you compare an elf with a bow. He pulls, you know how fast he can pull a bow and shoot. Yeah. Do you think that a team of dwarves can load this one ton freaking thing? Yeah. That... So I think I think that's fine, but you can only do it every other turn. It'd be hard to keep track of the turns. I think, it, once again, complications. That, uh, the thing is, you don't want something that you have to keep track of in that degree. Mm -hmm. You could do a once every other turn thing, but then you need a weapon that is so cheap. So cheap that you'd want to have two or three or four of them. So what you'd do is, let's say you do that. Once every other turn. What we'd do is you'd make it so that the siege weapon no longer... First off, we haven't even gotten to the second part. In the movie, it knocks them all uh, to the ground. You know, yeah, it causes horrific damage. Yeah, it, 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 well, it doesn't kill them, but it knocks them to the ground. So it's like, it's, it's Wait, literally it, heavy enough. It didn't kill them? Mm. We never no. saw an elf get up. Well, okay, so I had some engineers analyze the weapon... And uh, me and Casey actually talked to us about this in a video. And, okay. and uh, the engineers were talking about how the chain would not be... Uh, they, they could calculate how heavy the chain would be based on the fact that it didn't influence the, the, the torque, the spinning nature of it, mm -hmm. didn't influence the bolt. 
which means it has to be so much lighter than the bolt, mm -hmm. uh, X amount lighter, um, and, then, and then the bolt itself has to be X amount heavier than an arrow, usually 10 times heavier than the arrow in order to chop it out of the sky without being impacted on its trajectory. Mm -hmm. So judging by that, if you take the arrow, times it by 10, and then divide it by a certain amount, whatever that result is, you get how heavy the chain would be. Then when it's hitting the ground, you, in order to, it literally was a math calculation. They, in order to dig up the dirt and fling them back, the bolt would have to be even so much more heavy, which is what came to like a ton bolt. Do you, and do you hear that? Yeah, it, it's a lot. No, no, that, that's the whole bunch of brains exploding. That's, yes, that's what that was. We we did the math <laughs> for you. For you, <laughs> you don't have to. So just rewind it like four or five times. And <laughs> We there's, care about there's someone science that in fantasy oh. fiction. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait. Okay. I'm, so, that's really <laughs> I'm a math major and that hurt my brain. All right, so. Whatever. You get the point. Basically, <laughs> it did knock them down. <laughs> Got it. All right. So, so we're still handling the first part, whether it just stops arrows every turn for eternity. No, no, just for as long as you have priority and for as long as you stay within six inches of the target. Okay. So you have to go... Okay, oh, no, no, I guess I missed the part where you said you have to have priority. Okay, so mm -hmm. I guess that's not too bad. It's not, because you still have to have priority. And honestly, yeah. even if you don't, call her a shoot. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I think everything within six inches of the target, can't fire, and... Everything within like three inches of the target gets knocked to the ground. Otherwise, it's only a strength nine hit on the target itself. So it's not oh, an area effect damage weapon. Oh, oh, you, you, I was still have you jumped to the, the impact area. No, yeah, I even yeah, yeah. So six inches of the target, so knocked down. So three inches of the target. No, no, sorry. Six inches can't fire. Three inches knocked down. Target himself takes strength nine hit. Hell, we could do strength two hits for everyone because it's just a chain. I mean, you. It still hurt. I mean, if if you if you saw Deadpool, there was that one part where the the bike chain came off. And yeah. Removed something. Yeah. That, so yeah, I mean, a chain spinning fast enough and it hits, you know, a soft fleshy bit, it'll okay. still hurt a lot. So I think strength two is fine because that's wounding most things on fives, if not sixes. Yeah. Um, so, so it's not meant for its damage, it's just yeah. meant to clear out Elven Archery. <clears throat> and honestly, that's a pretty neat little trick when you oh. fire against like Rohan and Rivendell Cav, which generally <laughs> like to travel together, you are forcing them to split up, because not only are you knocking them down, you're stopping their shots. It's funny that you mentioned Rivendell and Rohan. <laughs> we won't go into it. So, <laughs> so basically, alright guys, this video, uh, as you guys know, I like to keep them short, so we still have the Chariot to go into, but we're gonna leave that to our next video yeah. and actually we'll have planned it out a little bit better because we haven't got a profile for that. Once again, Rob made these rules before he saw the extended edition. Mm -hmm. We didn't know about the chariots. So, um, what we're gonna do is we're going to have a great beast of Gorgoroth with a bolt thrower mounted on it and we're gonna figure out how to make rules for it and not make it feel like a tank. It should be a tank, though. It is a tank. It, it's, a, it's a tank. It's an open-topped tank. That's it. It's just, there's no cannon. Oh, it's going to be so bad. It's got blades on the side of it. Yep, it, it has blade. scythes. It's uh, got blades on the side of it. We'll figure something out for that, guys. And actually, we have to build one for our Return to Kerner campaign at Nova. So, it hurts so bad. We're gonna, yeah. Anyway. All right, guys. Well, <laughs> let me know in your comment section below if you want to influence our minds on where we go with that. What do you want to see? as the chariot stats and also of course what do you think of the stats that we've created mm -hmm. and uh yeah hopefully we uh I, we, I think we come up with something balanced because <laughs> balanced. this may influence <laughs> jay claire which may influence the fate of our game true this is important you thought that this was a casual conversation but this is the fate of your game system it will die <laughs> what? No, it got oh, renewed. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> that's Sorry, so more of it. That turned dark real fast. <laughs> no. I'm kidding. It's going to be fine. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know what more you want. Adam Troke <laughs> making a presentation. Jay Claire's rewriting the rules. Sourcebooks being re released. It's new true. models coming out. It's I mean, true. We're literally getting everything that we wanted. Yep. This is an awesome day for SBG. But anyway, guys, I will talk to you guys very soon. Oh.